How can loneliness be defined and why is it that some people choose to become alone and well they feel most likely even more miserable and some people choose to stay alone and well they aren't becoming miserable. See, first of all, being miserable is a state of mind. Well, it's also a state of the body if you live in miserable conditions. This can more or less be to one's full choice and full power of choice. But when it comes to life itself, well, we may not be able to choose literally everything and, well, everything that we want and every way that things will or should end up as. When it comes to loneliness, I classify it into two types, I would say, and it is impulsive loneliness and let's call it aware loneliness or conscious loneliness. Impulsive loneliness is technically that when, well, it is that impulse that people feel that they need to run away from literally anything when they feel pissed, when they feel attacked. It is a survival mechanism. See, when someone angers you, you want to run alone. When someone shames and kills you, you want to run away and stay alone so that no one else, you know, you you won't be hearing the smirks and jeers of, you know, your peers or the such. And this is like anything else which is impulsive. This is basically bad behavior. Many would ask why. Well, we are social beings. And how we allow other people to treat us is always our choice. There will be situations in which, obviously, the people around us will all be toxic. Because, well, that's what a sick society is all about. Creating people who are as shallow as possible. And shallow people will always be... uh, Will always have a tendency to be so, to be toxic. Why? Well mainly because they're not knowledgeable of their influence, of what hurt they can cause through their reckless behavior. When it comes to life, the point is, people like that will, well, swear you, curse you, pull you down, manipulate you, trick you, you know, all the all the set of negative behaviors that one can think of, and people who are reactive, aka people who are also ignorant, because ignorance has thousands of layers. Now, people who are always in reaction, aka people who allow circumstances to influence their mood, well, such people will always try to combat that, right? They will either become defensive, aka they want to be alone, because they feel depressed, right? And there is the other part which, well, they will become offensive. So they will actually join the fray. When they join the fray, the point is very simple. Um, They will enter the game that the other one initiated. And when you answer violence with more violence, well, only violence will be the result, right? Once violence won't usually negate the other one's violence, well, unless a war has sprung and one of the sides has proven defeated. So when it comes to reacting, right, when it comes to ignorant um, loneliness or impulsive loneliness, this is always negative because just like everything impulsive, it is done based on a survival mechanism. It is not a conscious or let's call it an uh, aware approach. If one is aware then they simply are knowledgeable of the influence of other people. They are introspective by nature. The more aware someone is, the more they become knowledgeable of the fact that even more introspection is needed. The more someone knows their interior, the more someone knows their own whereabouts, what can trigger them, their so-called weak points, then they can prove strong because now they are growing more and more knowledgeable of what can piss them off. And when you know what pisses you off, well, it's basically only your fault that you have 
allowed such circumstances to simply influence you, right? So, the point, shortly said, is this. People who are wise, they will choose to stay alone because that's how they can regain their strength, that's how they can become introspective and communicate because the universe communicates to literally everyone, more or less. But the universe, well, there are multiple voices speaking to us. The voices of our body, our intuition and the such. And these voices tend to be silenced when there is too much fuss in the mind. That is why people who are depressed, people who are low, people who want to feel alone or to be alone, right? Who run away from others and want to, you know, hide. They always end up being superficial because instead of uh, accepting the fact that they give too much power to other people, therefore allowing them to change their mood, well, these people will always be depressed. You'll see, they will always suffer because, well, sooner or later, Ignorance means not doing anything to improve your state, right? To improve your situation, your life. So, in such cases, such people will always be the same. They will always lament, they will always find the same pain, the same misery, because doing the same things will always yield the same results. It is only madness to expect something else. So, such people will always suffer. People who are introspective by nature, it doesn't mean they won't suffer, because suffering is more or less a part of life. It is a part because, well, you can't control everything in life. And, well, healing from past life traumas and, you know, your uh, childhood traumas and the such, well, these things have never been easy, right? No one said that healing your wounds, your child wounds, emotional, psychological, and the such. No one said that is easy. But still, it can be done. Now, the point is, um, it's just a matter of perspective. Wise people, introspective people, know what triggers them. And they know that they need to stay with people, spend time in society. But there is also a time where you need to be consciously alone, right? Not alone yourself, right? Imprison yourself in loneliness, but become alone so that, you know, you can recover your strength, you can re-become introspective and hear the voices within. Well, hopefully this short told you enough. Hopefully it was introspective enough. You are appreciated. Take care. Ferenjan Ford signing out.